Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Things might look a little bit different because I'm actually going back and forth between my old and new house right now and I'm going back to film videos every once in a while. Today I got here and I forgot my SD cards. So I have to film my video on my phone. Today I'm going to be talking you through some of the best investments that I've made that I think paid off the most for my craft room. Now I know some of these items may seem a little bit more expensive, but if you think of it like I do kind of at a per use basis, if I'm using these things every single day for several years, if they're tools, you're definitely getting your investment worth it. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, the first product that I find is a great investment is investing in a really good quality card stock. This is really important when you want your cards to seem kind of thicker and also for your products to work really well on them. Sometimes if people aren't getting great results with ink blending or water coloring, I always recommend them to use a different kinds of card stock and test out the waters with different types and see what they prefer the most. I tested out a ton of card stocks and I'm not biased with this. I tested out like a hundred card stocks before I found this one. Yes, this one is part of my product line. It is called Simon Hurley Create Stark White Card Stock. And lots of people have used it and switched over and say they absolutely love it now. It's got a little bit more of a price tag to it. However, it's really high quality. And with all high quality card stocks, you'll find that. I'm not even just saying you have to just use this one. I'm just saying test out the waters and see what you like. But on screen right now, I'm gonna play a clip of me using this card stock and demonstrating the difference between this and others, and you can make your own decision. So I've labeled here my Simon Hurley Create Stark White 110 pound card stock and a different brand of card stock that I used to use. And you can already tell just by this how much brighter white my cardstock is. Now I'm going to bring in an ink pad here and this is really where it starts changing because the ink that you use has to be quality but the cardstock also does. And like I said, I used to use this cardstock in the past. But one thing I noticed about it is that I get fingerprints all the time. And that's because the ink has kind of a coating on it and sits on top of the surface. So when I ink blend, you'll see I'll touch my ink after a little while and then I get fingerprints off to the side because it kind of sticks to my finger and pulls some of the ink off the surface. Now another thing that I noticed about it is you can see I tried going in with a second layer of color and the color didn't really build up on the cardstock. And again, that's because there's kind of a coating on the surface of that cardstock. It's very slight coating, like you wouldn't really notice it until you start laying inks down. Now I'm going with my cardstock here and I'm going to just blend that out and I'm going to do the same fingerprint test and I'm kind of trying to get fingerprints on here and it's very hard to do. My ink takes in really nicely to this cardstock and dries into the surface a lot quicker, which is really great. Now another thing that's awesome about it is it actually layers up so if you want a darker color you can get one which is super nice and a very important thing for me when I'm using inks. You can see how that color layers here and gets a lot darker and more intense. Now I'm going to do the same thing again with the other cardstock and really try to layer that up. And you can just see that it's not layering. It's actually almost just moving around the ink and just putting a lot of ink on the surface. It's not necessarily going in, so it even creates a bigger fingerprint there. But I'm gonna test out my cardstock and it creates no fingerprints. So that's one of the main differences. You can see how much more vibrant and solid that color is. One thing that kind of goes along with your cardstock, especially if you're an ink freak like me, is ink blending tools. And specifically just investing in several handles. These mini ink blending tools come in packs of two. You know, usually you can buy two handles and switch out the foams on top. But I like to at least buy three packs and that means you can get red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and a neutral tone. That way, if you want to, you can just use one foam for each of these different colors or pick the colors you use most or you'll be switching them out a little bit less often. I find that when you pull on these, sometimes yes, the foam can get ruined if you keep removing them over and over and over. So I find that if I have to switch them out less, it'll work a little bit better for me. And I like to have one for each color. Of course, that is a little bit crazy, but I think one for each color family like this isn't too big of a feat, but also it's a really great investment to save you lots of time and not ruin as many foams. By far one of the best investments I've made in my craft room is the Misty stamping tool. I know a lot of people say this, but for me, I use this every day in my craft room and this thing lasts years and years and holds up over time, especially this new one, the Misty 2.0. It's got the metal inside of here and a really nice handle, and I think thicker plastic too, which I can just tell the durability of this thing is going to be amazing. I'm gonna link up a video over here on all of the different tips and tricks you can do with the Misty, and that video just touches the surface. 
This kind of has saved me a lot of time and money as in cardstock has, because I would make mistakes on my cardstock and have to throw it out. Whereas here you can just double stamp it and make sure that it stamps perfectly every time. But also the amount of techniques and products you can use in your Misty that kind of help out your stamping and evolve your cards is really awesome. So whether you have a Misty right now and are loving it, or if you want to upgrade or purchase the Misty 2.0, I definitely think it's a great investment and you guys won't regret it. There are so many things you can do with this as it comes with stamping. <laughs> All right, one of the next best investments is this huge roll of 3M foam tape. I love this stuff because I use lots of foam tape on my cards and I like to have a big roll so that I don't feel like I like need to use it very scarcely and make the cards feel like they're not like gonna hold up through the mail. So I used to buy the little tiny rolls of foam tape because they have a better price point if you're just looking at it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's affordable. If you look at how much you get in this one, I think it's a little bit better of a value for money overall. This usually lasts me about a year or a year and a half to two years, um, which is a very long time for the money you're spending on it. And lots of cards are made with this. The reason why I like it so much is because you can just kind of go in here, you can tear off what you need. It tears really nice and easily and then go in and use it on your cards. It's perfect for shaker cards or things like that. Then you don't need to be worried about using too much foam tape. I think it's about 30 or $40. I'll link it down below. And this is a great investment as adhesive goes. Guys, I know I rave about this all of the time, but one of my favorite trimmers is this tonic guillotine trimmer. It's the perfect size. And lots of people ask where you get the little kind of pieces that come out. So the handle is stored here and so is the ruler. My paper cutter at home and it has the handle that's underneath yes. that you have to assemble. I didn't know you had to assemble it for the longest time. So I was oh, just I using the little stump. You didn't put the and handle everyone on. was like, hi Rena, great video, but there's something I need to bring up. What I like about it is you can pull this ruler out from the back and attach it on this side if you want that. But I also like that it doesn't have to always be out. That way it takes up a little bit less space, but this blade has lasted me so long, it doesn't get dull, which I really love, and it cuts straight every single time. I recommend going for this one first. If you want the mini one, you totally can, but this one has the ability to cut an eight and a half by 11 cardstock or 12 by 12, which I really think is quite important because I make lots of top folding cards and need to cut my cardstock down. No more needing to change blades anymore. Yes, this one is an investment up front, but I think I've had this for about three years and I haven't felt the need to buy a new one. It's not breaking down, which I really like. Okay, now the next one I've already packed. I don't have it in my craft room anymore here. It's already at the new house, but this is the Mink Machine. I have the Mink Mini and after I used it, my mind was blown and I don't know how I can go back to a laminator. Lots of people in my video with Nancy Stamps where we used the mink to do foiling asked if you can use a laminator. And the response to that is for sure. If you have a laminator in your craft room, definitely pull it out to use it. But if you're going to invest in foiling and the new tools, I definitely recommend getting a mink machine. The reason being is because the mink was designed to have a more even heat surface. So those little black dots where sometimes it doesn't foil is kind of avoided more because it's got a more even heat and pressure. It was literally designed to foil. So with that tool, I just found it gets hotter quicker and also it heats more evenly and foils a little bit better over time. Yes, you can still use a laminator, but I recommend if you love foiling or if you're going to get into it and don't have a laminator yet, invest in the make machine right away because you're going to get the best foiling results with it. Um, the thing I want to say at the end here is just invest in a good quality set of inks right away. An ink that can kind of do it all, which I think is really important. You guys can see I bought this whole wall of inks and there wasn't really an ink that did everything, right? I was reaching for one ink for stamping, one ink for watercoloring, and one ink for blending, right? Because they all are really good at different things, but I couldn't really find one that did it all. And so I definitely recommend investing in a set of inks that can do it all for you. For me, I wanna be able to, like I said, stamp, watercolor, and blend. So that's why I love my inks so much. They were formulated just for me, but find an ink set that you like. I recommend purchasing three colors, a red, a blue, and a yellow at first and testing them out. If you love that set of inks, then invest in the full set or the colors you know you're going to be using. But this doesn't mean these inks are gonna be perfect for everyone. If you guys want a more permanent ink, maybe invest in a set of archival inks. So just think about it. There's lots of different types of inks on the market. 
read into them, read what they can all do. But if these meet what you guys want to do, for sure, I'll have links down below for them. But just kind of look into it, test things out, and look to see what set is going to fit you best. Because I purchased a lot of inks that didn't really suit exactly what I wanted to do. All right, so those were the products that I think were the best investment for card making in my craft room. I hope you guys really found that helpful. A lot of you in my comment section in my most recent videos have been saying you love hearing my opinions on things because it helps you make decisions in your craft room and be a little bit more knowledgeable about tools before you buy them. So I hope this really helped. No matter what you purchase or what you buy, just make sure it is right for you in bottom line. These tools are the best for me, but we're all different in what we do with card making. So if I'm kind of like you, then maybe these tools will be great for you as well. And I hope this helped. Leave comments down below. Let me know some of your favorite card making supplies. I would love to hear about new supplies that I might not know about down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to click that subscribe button down below so you never miss another card making and crafting video like this one from me. And hopefully next time I'll remember SD cards so we can do a little bit of crafting as well. All right, guys, I'll see you very, very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.